Good morning, YouTube. This is Amber, it's your host, and welcome to yet another MMO Anthropology video, where this time I'll be answering the questions that you asked me about having one year of Guild Wars 2. During this, I tried to get some footage of the Claw of Jormag world boss battle, but as it turns out, world bosses do a hell to my GPU, and recording is even worse, so I apologize that the footage has a little bit of a, uh, frame rate issue here and there. But here we go, here's me taking your questions, answering them, and kicking the crap out of the Claw of Jormag. I'll see everyone on the other side. The first question is from Mujin J. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and he asks, My question is about Magic Find. Do you think the new MF system is better or worse than the old one? Do you sell your blues and greens or salvage them? Well, I'm going to mix this together with another question from Coney Trash, who asks essentially the same thing about do if I sell rare items or salvage them. That question is really easy. I melt everything that I receive with salvage kits, especially blues and greens. Uh, primarily because I'm going for greater amounts of magic find in order to, well, build that up in the future. I guess when I hit 300, I'll probably stop having a tendency to melt blues and greens. But because I'm also headed for my legendary right now, or at least I'm pretending that I am, I definitely melt rares and exotics when I find them if I have no use for them. Those would be the gold and yellow colored ones. However, I will more likely equip something if I like the look of it, and if, it, if I get a precursor, well, that's not being melted ever. So, but on the intent question that Mujin J asked involving the magic find system. For those who don't know, there was kind of a massive shift in the way that magic find works in Guild Wars 2. And this, I think, fits into the community or anthropological principles of looking at video games and how people play them. Initially, magic find was connected to your armor in a very Diablo-esque sort of way. You had armor that had a magic find stat on it, but in order to get a magic find stat on it, you had to give up another stat either toughness or damage or something similar, so as a result, someone wearing all magic find armor was finding magic at ridiculous levels, but had either really low survivability or pathetic damage output. And this was not good for groups, especially dungeon groups, who didn't want to carry someone who was trying to benefit from finding the best items, but not benefiting the groups, and this caused a great deal of tension, in what I call a tension between metagames. Interestingly enough, the new Magic Find system has introduced a whole new tension between metagames. However, it has eliminated the previous one, which, which affected groups, especially those that went into dungeon systems and etc., and infuriated people. The new system is much better for that. It allows for greater cohesion. It means that dungeons are more meaningful, and you don't need to worry about party members who can't hold their own simply because they're wearing an outfit outfit that gives them more magic find than durability. However, something that I'm going to be talking about in a new video coming up about the new magic find system, which I think is great, by the way, because it's account bound, it affects all your characters, and you just melt stuff for it, has introduced a whole new aspect, and that actually has to do with the fact that ArenaNet has made it so that champions w drop loot bags with interesting stuff in them, and most of that stuff is can be melted for more magic find. It's not directly connected to magic find, but it's another example of the competing metagames. So there's people who want to do these champion zergs, where they're running around zones in a particular rotation to kill champ champions every time that they come up in rotation in order to get these bags up their magic find, possibly find precursor loot, and etc. But as a result, there's also locations that get farmed by people trying to do their monthlies, especially if a monthly asks you to kill a number of veterans. This is especially poignant in an area like Queensdale, where the same area where the oak heart, the rotting oak heart, spawns, Dozens and dozens and dozens of veterans spawn, and people have always gone there to get that monthly done, but at the same time, they're killing the Oakheart veteran. As a result, 
it's generated a whole nother tension specifically to Queensdale. And I will be outlining this in another video that I'm doing about my observations about how people are doing this, how the community is reacting to it, and what what Zergs, you know, champion Zergs mean for the game and etc. Moving on, I've got a question from Lucid Dream who says, which one of the human needs is driving you most to play this game? Variety, certainty, significance, contribution, connection, or love? Now this is one that I never expected to see quite, but knowing that Lucid Dream is into psychology, I can see why this would become the question. I'd say the primary thing that leads me to playing this game actually has to do with connection and possibly I'd add love because my primary affect for playing games has to do with dopamine. It has to do with having fun and enjoying myself and adoring the fact that I'm able to create some sort of e element or embodiment of myself and attain goals. But I'm also going to games like this in order to see and meet people, and especially Guild Wars 2 has become part of my thesis research. It's become part of looking at the way the communities form in games and how the fact that they're inside of a structured environment created by devs or a gaming environment with rules and mechanics changes the way that those cultures form. Next question is from Joseph Lungrio. I hope I pronounced that right also. It says, what are your thoughts about Guild Wars 2's distribution of content since launch, which have, has been massive? And do you think that the living story will suffice, or are you looking forward to something else? Well, this has been an interesting question about when it comes to games and gaming and updating, especially MMORPGs which represent living or at least virtual worlds that have a f underlying fiction, and that fiction suggests that there's something ongoing. We've seen this effectively with games like Star Wars Galaxies, or excuse me, well, Galaxies, but, but I really mean Star Wars The Old Republic and World of Warcraft, which have an update cycle that changes the political dynamic of the underlying narrative in the underlying world. What do I think about the current uh, content update rate? I think it was ridiculously high, and I kind of enjoyed that, but as a result, it had a tendency to mean that I missed out on things. I almost meant, uh, missed out on the Karkra invasion initially. I definitely missed out on the Dragon Festival, but fortunately a large number of the much shorter ones are actually seasonal events. Something that I was well introduced to with World of Warcraft and their holidays like Winter's Veil vale or All Hallows End. And I really enjoy the fact that there is a living story in Guild Wars 2, but I think that the important thing of the living story is that some there has to be something that permits us to revisit it. And I don't mean in fractals or anything like that, but I mean I'd rather see something episodic, similar to the way that Star Trek Online works, which is where you can take a group of your friends and then visit old episodic content by going into instances or locations and replaying through the events and the history that, that made that work. Now, it makes more sense that episodic content that had like a year to go disappear into the ether and become history of the game, but if something is really short and only lasts a month, then in losing it like that kind of takes away from the fact that we have a digital medium that we can record and just replay from, and in fact that kind of detracts a little bit from Guild Wars 2 living story affect. Well, it creates in this sort of compressed span, this rapid narrative of explaining the construction and deconstruction of the fiction of the world, it does very little to affect the culture and the, of the players. It means that they're more disconnected from each other and from the game itself, and so it's more important, I think, to allow that narrative to play itself out and give people a chance to go back into it and replay it if you're going to do it in such a short a manner. Finally, CRUUG12 asks, It's been one year since Guild Wars 2 rolled out, and it's still pretty popular. I agree with that. What are your predictions about Guild Wars' future? Can it survive a few more years without losing all the players to a new fancy, better-looking blockbuster MMORPG? I have a feeling that Guild Wars 2 actually relies on a strong contingent of people who came from Guild Wars 1 and a new audience of people who came to it because it presented a whole novel set of mechanics. It has a deeply uh, interactive world that thinks about the fact that there's a lot of stuff going on. 
that has an easy level egg system that is casually friendly. And as a result, it means that people are less likely to run away from it to the newest blockbuster, even though it's kind of the blockbuster right now, even in the face of a juggernaut like World of Warcraft. I expect that next year we probably won't be seeing as rapid a development cycle of the living story as we did this year, because Guild Wars 2 is still learning from what it is to do a living story rapid cycle. I still anticipate that they will try to do development as quickly as possible, that they will try to do a life cycle that is as narrow as they can, and that there will be more events presented to people. But I think that the thing that Guild Wars 2 really needs to think about next year is not just expanding the number of maps and territories that they have, but introducing more of the living world, the different discussions, the, the interesting conversations that you walk place past, different uh, conversations, new events, because a lot of us who have been playing the entire year probably know about every damn event on every map now, especially the beginning zones, because when it comes to dailies and monthlies, where does everyone go? We go to the beginning zones, because that's where all the newbies are, and that's where the most likely population is doing those events, and as a result, you find yourself enjoying them more, and so they need the most attention. The end game, of course, will also need attention at the same time, which means that the middle game will probably suffer the most under my expectations of this game. And uh, as a result, chances are as they expand outwards, Guild Wars 2 will have to think about every little detail that they've inserted into this world, because as a structured fictional narrative in a virtual world, Guild Wars 2 spends a lot of time thinking about weird little details from little conversations talking about the origin of the Super Adventure Box or Moto having Asura babble about that or some Norn crying out about the weird steam creatures or other things that basically bring the outerlying regions of the maps which are in the end game and ore and stuff like that back into the front areas like the, the culture hubs and drive people to go out and explore them and figure out what these characters are talking about. So Guild Wars, in a sort of way, is a multiply tiered cultural experience when it comes to the fiction involved in it. They try really hard to make sure that every area talks about every other area, especially the hubs, and that they have some sort of interconnectivity. And this really works well with the loving story aspect, because there's always something new to enjoy and to bring people back. And of course, Guild Wars 2, because it's a buy-to-play with a freemium model, is constantly going to have to push to get people to buy weird and interesting aesthetic items, or even things to make their gameplay go faster. Well, that's all the questions that I have. Thank you for sending them in. I hope you continue to watch the channel, and I hope you enjoyed whatever footage that I ended up putting under it. Cough, cough, I think it's Clove, Gort, Jormag. And I will be off. To everyone, good night, and good dreams.